In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I have two young sons, Thomas and Joseph, and one of the things I have said umpteen times to them as they've been growing up is, listen, listen to me. I guess that every parent knows what I'm talking about, as well as any teachers or indeed anyone who's had to instruct people. And if you read the scriptures, you find something similar. Hear, O Israel, hear the word of the Lord. It comes over and over again. Because just like my young boys, the people of Israel were not always very good listeners. Perhaps it's the same with you and me. It's easy to forget that God gave us two ears, but just one mouth. There is a time to speak, of course. It's more a question of order. Take, for example, today's gospel story. Jesus healed a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment. Maybe it is just an accident that his inability to hear is mentioned before his inability to speak. Maybe it's just an accident that Jesus touched his ears before he touched his mouth. Maybe it's just an accident that we're told that his ears were opened before we're informed that his tongue was loosed. Maybe all that was an accident. Maybe not. I don't know. What I do know is that in Paul's letter to the Romans, we read that faith comes by hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. And then in the book of Acts, we read that the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. So the two essential ingredients of Christian life, faith and the gift of the Spirit, come through hearing. Hearing from and about Christ. No surprises then that Jesus cried out, whoever has ears to hear, let him hear. Why does it matter that hearing comes first? Well, I think it's connected to the whole of our reality. Everything we have, we have received. Everything is a gift to us. Knowing this is, I think, the first step on the way to being fully open to the truth. We are creatures. God is creator. We are not self-made. God is our maker. But it's easy to forget it and to live as if we don't rely on God for anything or everything. And that includes an assumption that we know best. We don't need anyone, not even God, to tell us how to be or what to do. We can rely on our own judgment, our own take on reality. But I ask you, if you look at the world around and perhaps even at your own life. Would you say that people generally know what's good for them? Dare I suggest that we may do well sometimes to misjudge our own wisdom, to mistrust our own wisdom. If you doubt me, then listen again to some words of Jesus from his famous Sermon on the Mount. You have heard it said, you shall not murder, but I say to you that if you're angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. You have heard it said, you shall not swear falsely, but I say to you, do not swear at all. You have heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn the other also. Each time, and there are more instances, Jesus takes a piece of established religious tradition and says, in effect, don't listen to that, listen to me. It took a while for Jesus's earliest followers to get the message that from now on, everything they knew, even what had been passed down to them through their religious tradition, had to be reinterpreted in the light of Jesus. Jesus was good news, the 
good news. And of course, for news to be news, it has to be new, something that hasn't been heard before. That's what I think listening to God is all about. If we want to have our ears truly opened, we have to start off by assuming that there is news for us to hear, that we don't already know it all. But even more than that, we have to be ready, like the deaf and dumb man in today's gospel story, to have our lives changed by the good news of Jesus. That is what God most wants for you and me. God loves us just as we are, to be sure. But God wants us to become something more. The change that God has in mind for us is something good, like the healing of the man in today's gospel. In fact, the Bible tells us that when we turn to Jesus by the Holy Spirit, we are changed into his likeness from one degree of glory to another. When he healed the deaf and dumb man, Jesus called out, Ephatha, which means be opened. There are many different kinds of openness, but the fundamental openness offered by the gospel is openness to God's transforming grace. Are we open to the possibility that we haven't heard it all yet? Are we open to the possibility that God has something new in store for us? Are we open to the possibility that we could be changed into the likeness of Christ and that that change could be glorious? That might be something that we could add to our prayers in the coming week. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.